Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're looking at just the today's viewer requested question and it is, the question is, is G warm up modeled in DCS world? So G warm up is something that a pilot can do if you like to prepare his body for G and increase his tolerance to G lock. G lock is when obviously you all know you pull too much G, the blood is drained from your head and the guy passes out. Now G lock is completely physiological. It's just like any, if you like, form of exercise. And like any form of exercise, to allow you to perform the exercise better, to increase your thresholds, to reduce your risk of injury, you have to warm up first. If you're gonna go for a quick sprint, for a 200 meter sprint, you've got to warm up first. Your body physically needs it. Exactly the same with physiological G-lock. Now, human beings are not machines. Even pilots, even the best pilots in the world, they're not machines. They're human, which means they have good days physiologically and bad days. They have a cold one day and the cold is gone the next day. When they have their cold and their body isn't doing very well, then their tolerance to G is bad. And these are, I forget what they call them, low G days or something. A pilot would have to tell me. And when they're having low G days, they're not allowed to do above a certain G when they go out and fly their aeroplane in the military. It shows how kind of temperamental, uh, how, how weak, if you like, a pilot is in, in the machine. Machine. You know, he physically can't go into a dogfight if he's feeling slightly under the weather or something. That's just how it is. And so the question is, is the G warm up, the physiological warm up modeled in DCS? And what he's done is copied paragraph here from a guy reporting in one of the forums. I don't know which one. So what I'll do is I'll read it out. And um, we can see what this guy thinks, whoever it is. It is true, a rudimentary G warm up is modeled in DCS. I've tested this after I kept almost G locking when practicing shipborne carrier recoveries and on the initial merge during BFM at around 6G in the Hornet. If you do a couple of 4 to 6G warm-ups prior to the max G turn, you have about 1 to 1 and a half minutes after G warm-up where you can complete a max G turn without G lock. In my testing, if after the warm-up you wait more than 2 minutes, you'll once again G lock under max G, around 6G in the Hornet. Star, I have only tested this in the Hornet. Okay, so what we need to do is now prove this right or prove it's wrong. But we, we, we have to really understand what we're doing here and to make it kind of as scientific as possible. So to make it scientific, empirical, repeatable, we can't really do just kind of sharp pulls up, pull ups with the back stick. The only way to do this kind of empirically, if you like, is to do sustain G. So I guess we're going to be asking the question, does G warm up affect our tolerance to sustain G? That's the best we can do empirically. There is something important I've got to show you, a video. I'll link uh, the video, the other video, about how G-forces affect a pilot at angle of attack. Uh, in fact, I'll just load it up here. Hello, everyone. I hope you all... This is a video from yesterday, and I'll link it down at the bottom here. And it's just, we have to, you know, if you're going to do a test like this and try and make it empirical, you just have to have just a basic understanding, which is that to do the test, to each time we, we do this test, we need to make sure that the aircraft is at a set angle of attack. So very quickly, uh, you can go and watch this video for proper description, but an F-18 here, an F-18 here, an F-18 pulling 9G at two degrees angle of attack, so going fast, will not have the same G-lock effect on the pilot as an aircraft going at 80 degrees or high levels of angle of attack at 9G. So this plane, this F-18 is pulling 9Gs, this F-18 is pulling 9Gs because of the centrifugal vector force where it's pulling the blood, we have a completely different G-lock threshold to this guy here, even though the planes are both pulling 9G. So the so the G level on the airframe, on the G meter in the aircraft, is not proportional to the effect that it has on the human. That's just the G level on the aircraft. The effect, physiological effect on the human, is a combination of the G on the aircraft and the angle of attack of the aircraft, or actually the angle of attack of his upper body, as we know from the F-16's reclined sea. So with that in mind, the only reason I showed you that is to make sure when we do our empirical test that we keep our angle of attack of our aircraft the same or within one or two degrees each time we do this test. Okay, uh, that's all I can think to say on that. I can't find any other way of doing that uh, scientifically, so I'm gonna jump into DTS now and we have a go. We'll just do it in the Hornet. I don't think there's any point of doing it in any other aircraft. If it's modeled in DTS, it will be in the Hornet. So from the previous video that I did, I can tell you that this aircraft can sustain, or sorry, this pilot, this pilot in this aircraft can sustain 7.4 G, be quiet. 7.4 G on a sustained turn at 7 degrees angle of attack. And the angle of attack is very important for the reasons we've talked about earlier. Okay, and we go. Build the speed up. Fuel 
Well, we want to be around about 500 knots again. About a 7 degrees angle of attack on... Slightly shy of 7 degrees angle of attack, but... There we go, we're on now. Yeah, about 7.4... Oh, sorry, 7.4G again is all we can sustain. 7 degrees angle of attack. Yeah, it pretty much matches up with uh, the test I had yesterday, averaged out about... Oh, look at that! I'm not touching the stick. What the hell is that? You had that before. I'm not touching the stick at the moment. That was weird. <laughs> that was cool. Wagner! So on that test, I went straight into a uh, turn, about 500 knots, because it just that's what I did yesterday, and I'd expect to see the same results again. Exactly the same method as this. Close as I could get to 7 degrees angle of attack, you know, I can't get it exactly right. And I could sustain about 7.4G over 30 seconds-ish of, um, of turning. So the good thing is, it's exactly the same as I had it yesterday. So now we want to redo the test and I'll keep in the same jet here, the same spawn, just in case there's some sort of randomizer like, you know, in the F-14 Tomcat, uh, the flight hours randomizer or something. And what I'll do is I'll just let him rest. Uh, just to kind of reset everything, if there's any, if there's anything that needs to be any integers or floating points that need to be reset. Then I'll do some warm ups and then I'll do the turn again and see if we get any more durability on a sustain. And uh, I think it'll be interesting. Okay, I've skipped several minutes. I've just been flying a straight line pretty much. Um, just to, you know, reset everything if anything re needs resetting. Now, going back to the guy's original text, if I do a couple of 4 to 6 G warm-ups, uh, that will give, it says, it will increase your G tolerance for up to 90 seconds. So, let's do some 4 to 6 G warm-ups. Okay, so we should get, if it works, up to 90 uh, seconds. Of increased G durability now so let's go and do it uh, the turn now and what I expect will probably happen is we still get our 7.4 G but we'll see I'm you know I may very well be wrong just gotta be a little bit careful overdo it here seven point four hang on just getting into the swing of it I need my seven degrees angle of attack. Oh, wow, look at that. The durability has indeed gone up. I mean, I can't. Yeah, I'm handling AG, look. Oh, that was weird. Just went and lost control. Um, well, I must admit I wasn't expecting that. Uh, my durability has indeed gone up to around about 8G, from 7.4 to 8G. So, uh, smack my mouth. G tolerance has indeed improved after a couple of warm-ups. Now, to rule out a fluke, I think the thing is just going to do the whole thing again. So, I probably won't show, show it all, but I'm just going to do it all again to make sure we get the same results. So, let's do a couple of 4 to 6G warm-ups. We'll turn it right again, just to make everything as fair as we can. Okay. Right, well, in theory, we should have uh, some extra tolerance for up to a minute and a half. So, let's just try and just repeat, I guess. And just try and get everything set up. Yes, that is improved tolerance. It's very hard for me to tell you exactly what that improved tolerance is. There was definitely some improved tolerance there. It was seven, definitely 7.4 before. How about that? 
So it does appear to clarify that if you do do the GM warm up, like we've said, then uh, somewhere between 0.3 to 0.6 extra G sustained at least. I can't measure, you know, instantaneous G because I just couldn't do it fairly. But sustained, as fairly as I can possibly do it, does seem to be an increase in thresholds. Let me know your thoughts, please, on the tests, whether you think it was accurate enough or whether I need to redo it a different way. I can't think of any other way of redoing it. I hope that was useful. See you later.